Previously, we have learned that the limit of a function can be determined in two ways. First, construct table of values and study the behavior of the function values as x approaches its indicated value. Second, sketch the graph of the function and study the behavior of the function as it goes closer to the given value of x from both directions. But these methods can be time-consuming and tedious. Nonetheless, following certain rules and limits can help simplify this process. Now let's have the limit laws. Let C and K be real numbers so that the limit of f of x as x approaches C and the limit of g of x as x approaches C exist. First, we have the constant rule. So the constant rule states that the limit of k, wherein k is a real number, as x approaches c is equal to k. For example, I have here, find the limit of 5 as x approaches 2. So that's equal to 5. Second example, find the limit of 8 as x approaches negative 3. That's equal to 8. Next, we have the identity rule. So the identity rule states that the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c. For example, find the limit of x as x approaches 2, so that would be equal to 2. Next, find the limit of x as x approaches negative 3, and that would be negative 3. Third, we have the constant multiple rule. It states that the limit of k times f of x as x approaches c would be equal to k times the limit of f of x as x approaches c. For example, find the limit of 4x as x approaches 2. That would be equal to 4 times the limit of x as x approaches 2. So in that part, we will apply the identity rule. So that would be equal to 2. So what we have now is 4 times 2, and that will be 8. So our limit is 8. Let's have our next example. The limit of 2x as x approaches negative 5. That would be equal to 2 times the limit of x as x approaches negative 5. So in this part again, we will apply the identity rule. So we have the limit of x as x approaches negative 5 is equal to negative 5. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now let's have the sum rule. So the sum rule states that the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus the limit of g of x as x approaches c. For example, I have find the limit of x plus 7 as x approaches 2. That would be equal to the limit of x as x approaches 2 plus the limit of 7 as x approaches 2. Now in this part, we will apply the identity rule, so the limit of x as x approaches 2 is 2. And in this part, we will apply the constant rule, so the limit of 7 as x approaches 2 is 7. So what we have is 2 plus 7, that would be equal to 9. Let's have another example. The limit of 3x plus 7 as x approaches 2, that would be equal to 3 times the limit of x as x approaches 2, plus the limit of 7 as x approaches 2. Now, 3 times the limit of x as x approaches 2, we will apply the constant multiple rule, so that would be 3 times 2. And the limit of 7 as x approaches 2, Applying the constant rule, that would be equal to 7. So what we have is 3 times 2 plus 7. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 7. That will be 13. Now let's have the difference rule. So the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c minus 
the limit of g of x as x approaches c. For example, let's have the limit of x minus 7 as x approaches 2. That would be equal to the limit of x as x approaches 2 minus the limit of 7 as x approaches 2. Now, the limit of x as x approaches 2 apply the identity rule that will be 2. And the limit of 7 as x approaches 2 apply the constant rule that will be 7. Now, 2 minus 7, it will give us negative 5. Next example, the limit of 3x minus 7 as x approaches 2. That will be equal to 3 times the limit of x as x approaches 2. Following the constant multiple rule, it will give us 3 times 2. Now, the limit of 7 as x approaches 2. Following the constant rule, it will give us 7. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 7. That will be negative 1. Now let's have the product rule. It states that the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c times the limit of g of x as x approaches c. For example, let's have the limit of 3 times 2x plus 1 as x approaches 2. That would be equal to the limit of 3 as x approaches 2 times the limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 2. Now, the limit of 3 as x approaches 2 following the constant rule, that will be equal to 3. And the limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 2 following the sum rule, it will give us 5. So, 3 times 5 is 15. Next example, find the limit of x times 5x plus 4 as x approaches 3. So that would be equal to the limit of x as x approaches 3 times the limit of 5x plus 4 as x approaches 3. Now the limit of x as x approaches 3 following the identity rule that will be 3. And the limit of 5x plus 4 as x approaches 3 following the sum rule that is 19. So 3 times 19, that's 57. Next, let's have the quotient rule, where the limit of g of x as x approaches c is not equal to 0. It states that the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c over the limit of g of x as x approaches c. Let's have our example. Find the limit of 2x plus 5 all over x plus 3 as x approaches 2. So that would be equal to the limit of 2x plus 5 as x approaches 2 all over the limit of x plus 3 as x approaches 2. So for the numerator, just apply the sum rule. So we have 2 times 2 plus 5. And same with the denominator, we have 2 plus 3. So simplify, it will give us 9 over 5. Next. Find the limit of 5x plus 4 all over x plus 5 as x approaches negative 1. So that would be equal to the limit of 5x plus 4 as x approaches negative 1 all over the limit of x plus 5 as x approaches negative 1. So following still the sum rule for the numerator, we have 5 times negative 1 plus 4 all over negative 1 plus 5. Simplify, it will give us negative one-fourth. Next, let's have the power rule. So if n is a positive integer, then the limit of f of x raised to n as x approaches c will be equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c raised to n. So example, the limit of 3x plus 4 cubed as x approaches 1 is equal to the limit of 3x plus 4 as x approaches 1 q. Following the sum rule, we have 3 plus 4 q 
So 7 cubed, that would be 343. Next, let's have the limit of 4x plus 9 squared as x approaches negative 3. So that would be equal to the limit of 4x plus 9 as x approaches negative 3 squared. Following the sum rule, we have 4 times negative 3 plus 9 squared. So we have negative 3 squared that is equal to 9. Next, let's have the root rule. So if n is a positive integer, then the limit of the nth root of f of x as x approaches c is equal to the nth root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So, example, let's find the limit of the cube root of, three, of x squared plus 4 as x approaches 2. That would be equal to the cube root of the limit of x squared plus 4 as x approaches 2. Following the sum rule, we have the cube root of 2 squared plus 4. So 2 squared is 4 plus 4 is 8. So we have there the cube root of 8, which is 2. So the limit is 2. You have seen that sometimes the limit of f of x as x approaches c is simply f of c, as shown in the identity rule. In such cases, the limit can be evaluated by direct substitution. That is, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c. So all you need to do is substitute c for every x in the function. Now there are many well-behaved functions such as the polynomial functions and rational functions with non-zero denominators that have this property. Let's apply the loss of limits and direct substitution in the following problems. So let's have A, find the limit of x squared as x approaches 4. So all you need to do is to substitute 4 to x. So we have 4 squared. That will give us 16. Next, find the limit of 5x as x approaches 4. So that would be equal to 5 times the limit of x as x approaches 4. Or just simply substitute 4 to x. So you have 5 times 4 that will give us 20. Let's have our third example. Find the limit of the square root of x as x approaches 9. Just simply substitute 9 to x, so that will be the square root of 9, and that is 3. Next, find the limit of x plus 4 squared as x approaches 3. So simply just substitute directly 3 to x, so you have 3 plus 4 squared, that is 7 squared plus 49. Now let's have our fifth example. Find the limit of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x plus 3 as x approaches negative 3. Now when you are given a rational function, you have to take note or you have to make sure that when you substitute c to x, your denominator will not be 0. Because if the denominator is 0, it will make the function undefined. So that can't be. So what we need to do is to divide out common factors in our denominator and numerator. So you look at your numerator and try to see if there is a common factor in our numerator and in our denominator. Now, in this case, x squared plus 3x minus 6 can be factored into x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now, common factors, x plus 3 and x plus 3 for both in our numerators and denominators, so we can divide them out. So what we have here is x minus 2 only. So now let's get the limit of x minus 2 as x approaches negative 3. This time, we can now directly substitute so negative 3 minus 2, it will give us negative 5.
Now remember that the limits of polynomial functions such as the quadratic and the linear functions can be determined by direct substitution. For rational functions, if direct substitution makes the denominator zero, check for common factors in the numerator and denominator and divide them out. Once done, you may now proceed already to direct substitution. So that's all for today, learners. I hope you have learned something and see you in our next videos.